Are you guys ready to roll, roll, roll in the hay? Because we are reviewing three movies by the famous Mel Brooks this week on The Verdict. Welcome to The Verdict, I'm Devontae Banks. I'm Noah Eastland. And I'm Zach Pugh. In this satirical take on Westerns, uh, crafty railroad worker Bart, played by Cleavon Little, becomes the first black sheriff of Rock Ridge, a frontier town uh, uh, about to be destroyed in order to make way for a new railroad. Initially, the people of Rock Ridge harbor a racial bias towards their new leader. However, they warm to him after realizing that Bart and his perpetually drunk gunfighter friend, played by Gene Wilder, are the only defense against a wave of thugs sent to rid the town of its population. Released in 1974, here is your trailer for Blazing Saddles. Torn from the fiery pages of the mightiest annals of the West comes the supreme saga in the great tradition of frontier drama. Francis. Jim, but most people call me Jim. Well, do your best. Now let's see. Where were we? Oh, Rock Ridge. Rock Ridge. I want that land. Clumsy fool. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. There might be a legal precedent. Of course. Land snatching. See, land, la land, see, snatch. Ah, uh, hello, handsome. Is that a ten gallon hat? So just sign this, okay. sir, right here. Oh, okay, give us a hand here. All right, sir. Work, 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 work. <laughs> Sheriff rallies his citizens in the wildest finish the West has ever seen or the movies have ever shown. Oh! 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 Have you ever seen such cruelty? So would you guys ride off into the sunset with this film? Oh, of course. This is one of not only Mel Brooks' best movies, but honestly one of the best movies in the genre, which is funny because, I mean, even though it's a Western comedy, it ranks just up there with the best Westerns. I don't know if I'd ride off into the sunset, per se. Oh. <laughs> I would ride near the sunset. <laughs> I would enjoy the sunset. But I don't know if I'd ride off into it. Not off into it? Yeah, I, not right off? the problem with it for me, personally, is the ending. It's just so sporadic and just weird. I mean, I, and trust me, I'm a weird guy. I like weird, but it's just, it was just a little too odd for me. Well, so, uh, well, let me ask you this. Did you like Monty Python and the Holy Grail's ending? Loved it. So like- Did love that. Cause I think that's the opposite of this ending. Mm -hmm. Whereas this ending is like, that ending is like, okay, you know, and that's a comedy, like nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But then with this one, it's like so much. My type of humor is more this movie, more of Monty Python. See, I'm a both fan of both, of, of both these films. I like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but I'm a huge fan of Blazing Saddles. Met, got the chance to actually meet Mel Brooks at TPAC uh, here in Nashville uh, when they did the uh, un uh, unrated version of the screening of this, and we got to ask him a bunch of questions. If you guys don't know this, Richard Pryor helped write this movie. When they were casting Clavon Little for the, for the film, they went through a hundred different people. Little was a, was a janitor at the playhouse that they were casting this for. They didn't pick anybody that they were auditioning. 
they saw him cleaning and Pryor's like, that guy, that's who I want right there. That's neat. Um, he had a line for saying that, but of course I'm not gonna quote Richard mm -hmm. Pryor, obviously, for yes. what he would say. Um, but when we asked him about how it was, or what it was like writing with Richard, he said, man, this, he was awesome. This was one of the best times he ever had. And ironically, Gene Wilder was not originally casted to be Billy the Kid. Um, they had another person for it, but the guy got sick on set. So Wilder fit the costume. And Mel Brooks said, well, if you fit the costume, you got the role. And so that's how, he get, that's how they did the role for Gene. And when uh, Mel Brooks was talking about it, he also said, uh, when they presented this movie to the, to the, the studio, the studio cut 98% of the movie. So there had only been two minutes of the film. But he, de he uh, demanded them to actually use the movie. And they did. They slow, they slow pushed it out, and then eventually it became the movie it is now. This movie would definitely not air today. No. There's no way not. in the world that this would air no today. It, 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 to me, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. I watched it with my dad. Um, I'm a big Mel Brooks fan because of him, and, and it's hard to talk about Mel Brooks without mentioning the other films, obviously, like History in the World Part Two, Spaceballs, or anything else. But for me, this movie makes what Mel Brooks kind of is. Uh, you know, we all know him from other movies like Spaceballs and other stuff, too, or the other two that we'll be talking about today, which is Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and... Uh, Young, Young, Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein, look at that, I blanked for once. Um, it, it, these movies are, are great and they're part of my childhood, so for me, I'm, I'm excited to talk about these. And for mm -hmm. Blazing Saddles, the way they do everything, they do the punchlines, all, all the cliche jokes, picking on every everybody, picking on Westerns, picking on evildoers, uh, him, uh, Henry LeMay uh, Padme, mm -hmm. or you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you always get his name wrong when you say it anyways. <laughs> um, all this type of stuff makes this film. And, and to me, that's what makes me enjoy this film. Um, I can't compare it to Monty Python, unfortunately, but I can say that out of the Mel Brooks films, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. In general, this is one of my all-time favorite movies because I'm a Mel Brooks fan, so. Oh yeah, and going off your point, it is kind of sad that movies like these can be made nowadays because like this movie is like anti-racism, anti-homophobia, anti-sexism. It uses humor to like investigate those things. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sad that we don't get movies that like push the boundaries, but still have, in my opinion, a great message. Yeah, and I think going along with this movie too, there's just the characters inside this movie are they're they're freaky people, but they're yeah. almost relatable in a way. Yeah. Like Mongo, like um Mongo. Uh, what is it? The really oh. country cave guy, yeah. the member of the family that's in the church, mm -hmm. you know. Um even the even, you know, when the sheriff becomes uh, when he invents the candy gram. So yeah. it just, you know, characters that Candy gram for Mongo. Yes, exactly. <laughs> characters that are really thought out and you know deliberately funny I, yeah. I really enjoyed watching them. especially one of the best villains to send them a Hedley Lamar I mean, yes. yeah <laughs> Hedley <laughs> legitimate <laughs> Le, Le Pedeme, you know Lamar <laughs> Railroad that's what it was gonna be the thing that got me the most with this too and something that you'll see if you ever watch the Netflix series with Jerry Seinfeld riding around in cars comedian and coffee or something like that uh, Mel Brooks actually makes an appearance on that show and talks about one of the scenes mm -hmm. so there's a scene where they're in the producing thing and you see them doing the uh, musical number where it's the throw out your hands stick out your hip thing um, um, there's a part of that scene where one of the cowboys uh, talks to one of the guys about going off to, a, to another area later on in the, in the time. And, that, and to me, that is crazy. Mel Brooks did not just push the envelope. He threw the envelope out the window and then threw the table with it and everything else. And that's what made him the director he is today. You know, So for me, that is, that is the movie. Yeah, right? and with Mel Brooks' movie too, something I want to talk about in this episode throughout is the liber little deliberate pieces of comedy that he has. Yeah. So in, in this film, of course, it is Headley hitting, hitting his head on the window seal. <laughs> he yeah. has that all throughout the movie, and it's just something little and deliberate that's funny. You know, something that he places all throughout the film just to kind of remind you that it, it was a gag at the beginning. Yeah, and so. the work, work, work thing has always got yes. me. Oh, yeah, yep. or just slowly casting himself throughout the movie. Exactly. And you yeah. see him as like this. <laughs> if you want to talk about where Tarantino yep. got his idea of being a, being a role in, in the films, that, that's Mel Brooks right there. Yeah. That's Mel Brooks to a T uh, for any of the movies that we're going to talk about today, obviously. So, you know, with all that, you know. So, I believe we're moving on to you. Yes. So, next up, we have another Mel Brooks classic film, Young Frankenstein. Young Frank Frankenstein follows the grandson of famous Dr. Frankenstein, played by the late Gene Wilder. Prof Professor Frankenstein, or Frankenstein, tries to prove that his grandfather was not crazy, which leads him down a path creating life just like his grandfather. Here's your trailer for Young Frankenstein. It's coming from the deep, dark recesses of the mind of Mel Brooks. I love him. Young Frankenstein. Sky 
Spy means business. Young Frankenstein. Oh dear, nothing left. What shall we throw in now? Starring Gene Wilder as Dr. Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. But what about your grandfather's work, sir? My grandfather's work was doo-doo! Peter Boyle as the monster. No! <laughs> Marty Feldman as Igor. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Loris Leachman as Frau Blucher. You played that music in the middle of the night? Yes! To get us into the laboratory? Yes! And it was you who left my grandfather's book out for me to find. Yes! So that I would... Yes! Then you and Victor were... Say it! He was my boyfriend! Carrie <laughs> Gar as Inga. Would you like to have a roll in the hay? Roll, roll, roll in the hay! Kenneth Mars as the inspector. And Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. Where am I? <coughs> Calm down. What are you going to do to me? <coughs> I'm not afraid of you. <coughs> Listen, I, I'm, I have to be back by 11.30. I'm expecting a very important call. Kill the monster! Storm their castle! I'm spent late! Young Frankenstein. Yes, I think we could all use a good laugh. But don't see it alone. Don't miss Young Frankenstein, personally directed by Mel Blazing Saddles Brooks in black and white. No offense. So I have to ask, did this film make you guys feel alive? Well, it's Frankenstein, first off. Uh, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember that. For me, I love this film. Um, obviously, we found out with the, last, with the last movie that I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan, thanks to my dad and, and, and my family in general. Um, I love the, the black and white cinematography that came from it. Uh, when Brooks was here in Nashville a while back, uh, he announced the, the Broadway play that happened, uh, I believe in London, uh, I think's where it was, um, somewhere in England. Um, and, and overall, the, the, the way the movie comes together is something that is kind of appealing because there's all these different takes about how the monster is started and how all this comes together. Um, however, for Mel's version of it, it's got that comedy appeal to it. Um, I can never remember the, the, the gentleman's name that, that he was the father in, in the, the Ray Romano show. Um, yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, um, yeah, he yeah. is the, the monster. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, not to give anything away, of course, you know, because you know, obviously you should have seen this movie by now, but um, the ending of that movie is just hilarious because it kind of, they, they pay homage to it in the, the Ray Romano show mm -hmm at one point uh, to the Young Frankenstein movie. So that was something to me that's really cool because a lot of people are doing that now. Uh, I mean, this movie, just like most of his filmography, is hilarious. And one of the things that I think points out is behind the scenes, this movie was super expensive to make. Not because of any special effects or anything, but because the audio tapes were ruined by the cast and crew laughing. So they had to go <laughs> back and reshoot like half of the movie just to get it to look normal. So that should let you know how funny this movie is. I mean, the comedic timing is great, but not only that, but one thing I like is a lot of people now are so lazy when they make fun of genres. One thing I like about Mel Brooks, whether it's this or Blazing Saddles, or Robin Hood Men in Tights, he makes a movie look and feel like a movie from the era he's parodying. So you can tell he's put a lot of effort into making sure like this is accurate parody of this type of genre. Yeah, I, I think this film, this goes along with the Mel Brooks equation. He has rememberable, rememberable characters. He has um, Igor, of course, you know, super rememberable. <laughs> and then he has the sheriff with the, you know, the hand that he uses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so he has the deliberate humor, just like um, <laughs> with the sheriff scene where they're playing darts in his mansion, when he, you know, throws it and throws the dart and you hear the cat noise. That's actually Mel Brooks making the cat noise just on the spot <laughs> going, meow. Wow. <laughs> just a little delivery humor. Uh, and then you have, you know, the whole um, Broomhilda. Every time you say her name, the horses neigh. So just little <laughs> deliberate comedy scattered throughout the film just to make this movie work. Uh, oh, you go ahead. I, I was going to say, uh, the, the, you're right. The, the deliberate comedy thing is you had mentioned that uh, he, he tends to make them timepieces uh, 
he, he stays consistent. Now, granted, he does break that continuity a little bit, mm. um, but uh, overall, I do agree with you, especially for this film, he does stay consistently inside that time frame and, and that era. Um, I, I love the uh, the brain scene. You guys remember that, where he was, <laughs> make sure you pick a smart brain. Yes. <laughs> and they definitely don't get a smart brain no, uh, to start no. off with. Um, it, it evolves later on, of course, as we as we notice in the film. But but I love that scene. Um, and as you said, the sheriff, that hand, mm -hmm. I, just those subtle touches is what makes Mel Mel Brooks a a wonderful director. And, and, and overall, it makes the films much better. That's why we remember them is because of those subtle touches. So. And his writing is so like tightly wound. Like I feel like, especially with because we have these Judd Apatow, Seth Rogen comedies, which you know some I really like. But like so many things are just improv now. And like some things in this movie you could tell are improv, but most of it you could tell are just jokes that have been built on top of each other mm -hmm. to the point to where when there's a callback or something, you laugh even harder. And that thing is going to lead to something else even funnier down the line. <laughs> is I think what you were talking about, his deliberate yes, comedy. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, it's deliberate and it's story-based comedy. Yes, so yeah, and th that's something that we're missing, you know, a lot in today's comedy, like you said. Yeah, it's just comedy today has started to feel, you know, really cheesy and, you know, I made for the audience. Dur you, you can tell that it's directed towards the audience. And, and with, with the Mel Brooks films, a, a, as, we're, as we're discussing, and, and I can agree with you guys, the way comedy comes through, it, it's, he had his own delivery. And there's people that have tried to kind of recreate that uh, with Mel's teachings and stuff like that, and they've done a decent job. The problem is, is that this is probably another stand-in case that possibly stuff from this film wouldn't have aired. Mm. Um, and the same will be with Men in Tights, obviously, when we get to that. Oh, but I mean, I can, you can go through most of his movies, and a lot of his movies, he pushes the envelope, but he pushes the envelope because he can. Um, and, and because he has the ability to, to, to do that, that's why we get to enjoy these things. And uh, I think uh, out, of the, out of the three that we are reviewing, it's not my favorite out of the three, but it is one of my, my all-time favorite movies yeah, as well. It's, so. it's definitely my favorite out of the three. And I think why it is, is because I think this is the movie that defines Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. I know many will argue that it is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But I, his, he just, all around, he is just wonderful in this movie. Whether it be the singing, the dancing, and even the comedic timing is just gold by Gene Wilder. The way he delivers his character, delivers his lines, it's just spot on. True, this movie is like an actor's dream. It and is. I mean, he sells in each and every part. I mean, I actually agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, because in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, yeah, in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, he's just kind of like a guy mm -hmm. who's just kind of there. He's kind of more this figure. Exactly. Blazing Saddles, he's barely in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but this movie, this really is his movie. And I mean, as far as like directors getting close to this, the only director I could think of that is even close mm -hmm. to Mel Brooks is probably someone like Edgar Wright with Shaun of the Dead, who has just like jokes that. that build on top and, of and each that's, other. And that's what, I, that's what I'm referring to. You know, you've got these, this ability where, where Mel Brooks layered jokes on top of each other to deliver them. You said Gene Wilder. I, I, I like Gene Wilder, obviously. Um, but, but Gene's delivery in this movie, I agree with you, this makes his career much better than just a couple of little things like with Blazing Saddles mm -hmm. and, and with uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and all of that. Um, you, you, get these, you, you get these different uh, contexts from him and he really does go all out in this film. Um, so I, I definitely agree with you there. Yes, I mean, even it's just simple little stuff that he makes like, you know, the scene with the revolving bookcase. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, if most actors doing that, it would seem oh, pretty, gosh. it seemed like a corny scene. Yeah. But Gene Wilder just pulls it off with the timing of his lines. That it just it makes it feel real and genuine. Exactly, it's those little touches that make it. It's made of a movie with a bunch of great little touches. Let's talk about Robin Hood Men in Tights. Now this is Mel Brooks' 1993 parody of the Robin Hood mythology. It stars Carrie Elways and features a young appearance by Dave Chappelle. Let's take a look at the trailer. When the system failed him, he had to make his own law, his own justice, his way.
20th Century Fox presents Robin Hood, Men in Tights, a Mel Brooks film. Yes! So guys, was this movie tight? It was, it was tight. I don't think it was tight tight, but tight, it was tight. tight. I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad film at all. And once again, deliver comedy at its best. Uh, the, um, just Mel Brooks with the whole bl bless you gag. It's just something that is sporadically throughout the movie that, you know, consistent comedy. It's, it's something that he did deliberately, something he wrote deliberately, and something that worked. And, and going off of that, that delivered comedy and stuff, think about the, uh, the chastity belt yep. thing. There's a lot with that. Yep. Um, there's the, the mole that moves constantly on yes. the king. There's the, uh, the, 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 the meeting of Little John, mm -hmm. who's not so little, uh, <laughs> as we've noticed. Um, I would say this was tight, tight. Tight, tight. I think that's what it would be. Um, I, I, I personally think this movie is great. Um, the, the actor who I can never remember his name. Carrie Elwes. Carrie Elwes. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry if, if he ever watched this, watches this. I never remember your name, and it's not because you're not memorable. You're a great actor. <laughs> um, it's just I'm bad with names. Um, I, I don't think you can see anyone else playing that role for, for Robin Hood. I don't think you can. Um, and the, the other thing, we talked about this a little earlier when we were discussing the films, um, the, the blind man. The bl what? Blinka. Blinka. He, that is the best casting ever. He, 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 I mean, the one mo scene where he's like, I can see again, and then he gets hit, and he's like, oh, well, back to normal. Like, I was like, it was a normal thing for him to be blind. I, I couldn't believe that. Um, you know, the overall aspect of this movie is great, and there's so many little, little nuances they do. Dave Chappelle is hilarious in this film. Oh, yeah, one of his um, first roles, too. I think the, the, the whole scene where they're, they're dancing and they're singing and all that, that, that is hilarious. Uh, and there's so many things I can pick apart from this thing. I mean, my favorite bit, personally, is the Lemme Your Ears bit, because it's so gross and so <laughs> Yes. I'm here. And it's like this is so gross. gross. And it has that recurring bit. Mel Brooks does in like all of his movies where the characters know they're in the movie. Yeah. We're like, okay, let's read the script. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I love that they actually read huh. the script. And, uh, and just like how Noah felt that uh, Gene Wilder instead of in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, uh, his most iconic performance was in Young Frankenstein. I feel like, and this is a hot take, instead of the Princess Bride, this is the best carry out. Ooh, okay. I, I, I have to say because he has. Way more to do here than he does in the Princess. That's I, true. I think I think Princess Bride definitely makes his career. Yeah. I think this is a, a close number one with that. I think Princess Bride is a better movie. The the, the, the fourth wall break. He it, the reason I say you can't cast anybody but him for this is the way that you do the fourth wall break and you get that eyebrow raise of like yeah I just said that um, as I fourth wall break. Um, it, the, the way you do that, the way he does that, it, it is completely different from anybody else they could have casted for this role. And so for me personally, he does make the he does make this movie all together. And I think. Mel knew that as well when he when he starts to to do that when he starts to cast the, the people I think he knew instantly that's the guy I have to have because he primarily did this movie for writing and all of that exactly and one of the great things about Carrie Elway's is I mean whether it's this or the princess bride it's kind of hard not to talk about one without the other because the set right. is so similar right, right. it's like he can play anything straight which, which really yeah. helps in the Mel Brooks movie. And um, unlike the other two movies in the genre, which were like more parodies, it was just like, oh yeah, these are good to make fun of it. I mean, and let's be honest here, you know, Kevin Costner is the most iconic Robin Hood. People still think of Carrie Elway's. This movie is the most iconic Robin Hood movie. So it's pretty interesting that Mel Brooks, he didn't create, you know, a, a big parody that just is like, oh, this is a parody of the genre. He created a movie that literally this, when you think of Robin Hood, most people think of this movie. You don't think Exy? You don't think of the the Kingsman Exy? <laughs> no. Robin Hood? No. Jamie Foxx? <laughs> I don't think of Jamie okay. Foxx. I mean, a terrible hey, British it's, accent it's fine. Fox. I mean, I just, I just was yeah. curious. I mean. um, <laughs> something else I want to point out with all the Mel Brooks movie that we've touched on a little bit. It's his power of inserting music into his oh comedies. Yes. You know, I, I personally, off the top of my head, I can't think of another director that can, you know, truly insert music into their movies so smoothly as he does. So I'll say Rob I agree. Yes. Mm, but I, he's a composer. I, I, I don't even like Rob Rodriguez's movies that much. Comedical songs. I, I would say yeah. I would say that he that, that Noah's on the right track there. I mean, you've got Blazing Saddles has the has the scene with the uh, the, the lady talking about she's tired. Yes. Um, the congregation singing. Yeah, you got the congregation singing as well. You have um, in. Uh, 
oh, and young Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Yes. Um, you have um, the wonderful uh, tap dancing. Putting on the uh, yeah. yeah, putting, putting on, on the, the Ritz. Taco. Yeah, um, and then uh, and in this one you have the the men in tights. You have there's a few musical numbers in this one actually. Sure. Um, the, the, the most memorable one that I can remember obviously is the the tight tight one because yeah. uh, it's just hilarious. Um, and to get Dave Chappelle to do that probably was was hilarious to yes. do as well. Yeah. Um, but I think you guys forget John Landis is also pretty good at this too. I mean Blues Brothers, he has a great yeah. musical yeah. moments. Coming yeah. to America, Eddie Murphy's every well, time he's doing it's another one funny. of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I can't like trading yeah. places. Like Here's his musical moments are pretty funny. Devante. Blues Brothers is a deliberate musical comedy. Yeah. It's a deliberate comedy that centers mm -hmm. on music. Coming to America is not, and it says a bunch of music. That's one movie. Mel Brooks does yes. it throughout <laughs> his spectrum. Yeah, I mean, uh, the History of the World Part Two, uh, Spaceballs, all of them have like some, I think, I'm pretty sure Spaceballs has a musical number, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I think Probably, every yeah. one of his movies has a musical number. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the no, producers. definitely. Uh, producers, yeah. yeah so let's not forget about producers. producers. I mean, even at the end of Blazing Saddles with, um, you know, the whole, uh, what are they called? This is Showboys is what I'm gonna call yeah, them. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the one boys. I was talking about, the, uh, the, uh, the thing throw out your hands, say. stick at yeah. your hips thing. Yeah, that one, the, the word that we can't say for that one, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that scene for that movie, oh gosh, I, I, can't, I can't anymore. They would have to cut that whole shout thing out, to, out now. Shout out to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Pugh on that one, man. Thank <laughs> you, thanks, Dad, thanks, appreciate that. Um, but no, man, uh, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, uh, overall movie, out of the three of these, of course, for me, it's Blazing Saddles, it's Men in Tights, then it's Young Frankenstein. Um, you're welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> that's my three, unfortunately, for, for, for the three that we have. Um, it's so hard to put a number on them, but for me, that's just where I stand, so. I don't know, yeah. for me, I would say out of the three, this will probably be my least favorite, and I would probably say Young Frankenstein and then Blazing Saddles, as far as like my favorites. I say, personally, this is my last one. I, I think this is a little more cheesy than the other films. So you agree? Yeah. A little more gags. It was 93, you know, 1993, you could get away with being a little, true, little true. cheesy. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 I think Young Frankenstein is the best. And then I'd put Blazing Saddles right underneath it. Thank but you, sir. I'll take I, number two. I think, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll take number twos all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. They're also, it's hard to compare them in a way, though, because they're, you know, they're all just so, uh, just different. different. Yeah, all, all different. the amazing thing about Mel Brooks's films, if you notice with all of the, the cinematography that he's done so far, most of everything is in a different era. Have you noticed that? Yes, well, yeah. History of the World Part Two is, you know, straight ancient type, type uh, I think we're going into Britain right there for that. Um, you've got Robin Hood Men in Tights, you've got, uh, which those two were probably the only two that are closest together. Mm -hmm. Blazing Saddles Western, Young Frankenstein with the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it, uh, with, <laughs> with, with the, uh, the black and white film, uh, yep. filmography for that. Yeah. I mean, Spaceballs so, so, I mean, is literally in space. Spaceballs is literally <laughs> in space. Yeah. Uh, Spaceballs 2, Quest for More Money. Uh, <laughs> please, please do this movie. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's being produced right now, um, but no, I, I I have to say, you know, out of all of his his cinematography, definitely it's hard to compare all of them together because from the get go he does a pretty good job with everything, mm -hmm. and that's what makes Mel Brooks the 92 year old director that he is. Um, that's what makes him the person that he is. Yeah, so. and it's what makes us, you know, excited to see him. Exactly. You know, oh, yeah. even in Hotel Transylvania 3, oh, he's gosh. playing Adam Sandler's dad. Yeah. It, yeah. it just makes me want to watch the movie just to hear that iconic voice that Mel Brooks has. I'll tell you what, when, we, exactly. when, we went to, when, I was, when I was doing the CPAC thing, he got up and started walking around. And for him to be in his 80s at the time, uh, late 80s at the time. He is spry. He's got. He's more fit than I am, uh, and I'm of course not that fit. But um, he is more fit than I am. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you know. his movies stay young and healthy. Like oh, right. I hope so too. But that <clears throat> is it for this week. Uh, next week we're going to do books to movies. We've got To Kill a Mockingbird. We've got the awfully amazing Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> we've got more awful. <laughs> so we ended up with the Da Vinci That Code. is it for this week. Please watch every Mel Brooks movie that you can. Please. And do it. It's up on YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys.